Um, so what I just wanted to invite you into our room by maybe telling us a little bit about what's going on right now uh, with fee and dividend. What have you, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, well, well, thanks very much for, for inviting me uh, uh, to this. Um, and I'm sorry that I, I signed on probably a little too early. I, re I read the uh, email now and I was supposed to sign on at the half hour. But in any case, uh, here I am. And if I could say a few words uh, first, I, I'm sh just a couple of sentences, introduction. Um, I'm sure you know that there's this very widespread uh, recognition in the scientific community that we have really used up most of the carbon budget that we're allowed. And yet, globally, what's happening is we're burning fossil fuels faster and faster. So it just seems like there's a complete disconnect between the science and the policy. Uh, and um, so, well, well, so we need to find a method to begin to reduce uh, fossil fuel use. And the fundamental problem is that fossil fuels appear to be the cheapest energy. And as long as that's the case, people will keep burning them. But of course, they're not really cheapest because they're not paying their costs to society. The human health effects of pollution and the climate effects need to be included in the price. And I think, uh, and of course, what we will need is a global system, and uh, it needs to be a price on carbon which is across the board that covers everything. And that's why the idea of having um, a fee or that's collected from fossil fuel companies at the source, either the domestic mines or the ports of entry. And with the money distributed 100% to the public because uh, that's, the, that's the, the only way that we could get the, it to work in many places uh, it, where we simply, uh, people do not want to see another tax and see more money going to the government to make bigger governments. Uh, and so I, I think it's, it's really important that that the money be distributed to the public. And so the person who does better than average will actually make money. And there will be a big incentive for people to try to limit their carbon footprint. Now, why should we suggest that Norway consider this? Well, we need an, an example. Of course, Norway does not have uh, an obligation to do this, Norway is not a big polluter. Norway's carbon footprint per person, I believe, is is uh, not unreasonable. But it's it's an opportunity in the sense that we need some place to demonstrate a system that would actually work and begin to drive down uh, carbon emissions uh, rapidly. You know, we've had examples like. British Columbia, where they had a carbon tax, and they reduced the payroll tax in turn, and that's that's the closest example we have. But half of the people didn't get any dividend because they're either retired, they're not on a payroll because they're retired, or because they're out of work, and that amounts to almost half the people. Uh, so it's not, a, and there's not that a strong incentive for it to keep uh, increasing. And Australia also had a carbon tax, but they didn't have a dividend, and so people don't like it. Uh, so if we could just get one country. You know, I, I met recently with Ann Glover, who's the uh, scientific advisor to the European Union, and she, she actually likes this idea very well, but uh, uh, but she says, you know, it's hard to get the European Union to adopt something because the, the countries have not given up their authority to the European Union. So if a European country could show that it would work, you know, it would, it, I think it, 
potential is uh, is very great to do something uh, to do something useful. Now, I also uh, I, I noticed that on one of the, your charts, uh, which I, it may have been corrected, uh, but I, there were a couple of errors on one of the charts. Um, and there's it, a hiding now. <laughs> you know, it says the uh, with the hundred and fifteen dollar per ton tax on CO two, that in the United States it would give one thousand five hundred euros per month. That should be 1,500 euros per year. Uh, so it's... Uh, uh, it's it was in Krona. Oh, it was in Krona. It was in the Norwegian currency. Oh, 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 okay, I'm so, sorry. Yeah. So maybe yeah, yeah. it is the correct number. Yeah, okay. we have big numbers here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The other, the, on that same chart, it said that half of the people would get more money than they... Uh, incur in increased prices. Actually, with the current distribution of energy use in the United States, 65% of the people would get more in their dividend because of the of the distribution. There are a smaller number of people who are have a big carbon footprint. So, if you travel around the world, or if you have two houses or a very big house, you know, then you pay a lot more than the average, and so it's not a, a, a uniform uh, distribution. Um, and then finally, on that chart, it asks at the bottom: Is this socially just? And I would like to point out that it is a progressive tax, so the wealthy people pay more. And the people who pay or who have less money are more likely to pay attention to their carbon footprint. So I think it is uh, socially just and does a little bit in trying to uh, uh, change the fact that the wealthy, at least in our country and in many countries, the wealthy are getting more wealthy and the poor are getting poorer. And this would help a little bit. Yeah. And we're starting increasingly to see some of that trend happening here, although, of course, to a much lesser degree than you have in the United States. So now maybe we can shift over. Thank you so much for the introduction and some of the corrections and clarifications. Um, we're going to ask first the three politicians to have their turn to each ask a question, because after we're finished with you and we have a break, we'll come back and they'll have each a chance to kind of respond and give their sort of position or idea, opinion on this idea. So it's only fair for them to have a chance to ask. So let's begin just starting uh, with the person sitting closest, um, and that is Ula Elvestan from Venstre, which is, is the translation to English liberals? Yes, liberal party. The liberal party. Um, so he will have the word first. Oh. And you have about kind of five minutes per person. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, no. now it's just questions. No, right? it's just questions. 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 Yeah, and then but we talk that, afterwards. Yes. Yeah. And you also might uh, know that uh, I chaired the committee on uh, energy and the environment in the Norwegian parliament. So that is my position. And I find it very interesting. And I totally agree that the most efficient thing we can do is to tax fossil fuels. And that is also something that well, I've, been a, I've even been elected to make that race, so we'll work on that. I think the other two here also will, will agree. But what I'm more uncertain of is the dividend part. So what I'd like to ask is that, because you, you like to take in the tax and then share it equally. I think in Norway, we also have a, and my part, if you have an idea that you have a kind of like a green tax change, that we tax fossil fuels and also all other uh, non-environmental, uh, um, not environmentally friendly use. But when you use that money, you rather use it for making it easier to make green choices in your everyday life, uh, or you make it, or you need the money for research. You need it. You need a lot of lot more programs to further an environmentally friendly. Uh, economy to further uh, research and to work on much more levels than only the tax system. Uh, I don't know if this is a question, but could you comment on is the tax just based on a 
carbon tax? Is it not a little bit too simplistic? Uh, well, I think there's a lot of merit in simplicity. Uh, you know, you it. I, I can uh, uh, imagine that in Norway you might do a good job of choosing how to spend that money to improve to uh, spur. Uh, changes or even technological changes that you want to see. But I think, in, at least in our country, there's a great uh, uh, reservations about the government taking the money and deciding how to spend it. Because we, the public simply does not trust either of our major parties now. And they don't like to see the government take the money to make the government bigger. And also, there's a very strong uh, feeling that the government doesn't make the best decisions, and uh, especially among conservatives. They would like to see the marketplace make the decisions, uh, rather than the government saying everybody has to have solar panels or whatever. Uh, and I, and I, frankly, I agree, I tend to agree with the conservatives. We do not have very good experience with the government making smart uh, choices. Now, I don't think this needs to be the same in every country, uh, that aspect, but I think in the United States, uh, I think we cannot get this to pass without, if it's going to make the government bigger. Um, you know, we, we have started to get attention to this, and so the, the liberal party here, the Democrats, uh, Barbara Boxer and, and Bernie Sanders introduced a fee and dividend uh, bill, but they want 40% of the money, and that's just a non-starter with, uh, with Republicans, with conservatives. They do not want the government to have more money for more social programs, so it Anyway, it may vary from one country to another. So I'm going to, okay. something I should have said before we start on the question round is that I might be a little bit cruel and cut us off at points so that we have a chance for multiple rounds of questions. That's great. Thank you so much, Ula and Jim. And now I'm going to shift the reins over to Hanna Makasan, who is from the Green Party, a spokesperson for the Green Party, uh, to ask, yeah. Jim, a question. Hi, Jim. Uh, let me start by saying that the Green Party, we are positive to the idea of a carbon fee and dividend. But still, the situation in Norway is quite different from in the United States. Norwegians are not as opposed to big government as Americans. And we also do have a carbon tax, even though it's not high enough and it's not a dividend. Uh, but the, the situation is different in Norway from the United States. And what I would like to hear is your thoughts on if you think it would be possible to get an international agreement on fee and dividend that would not lead to any reductions in the Norwegian carbon tax and still would be acceptable for countries such as the United States? Would we need different prices in different countries or would we manage with one price? Yeah. Well, see, I think in case of a country like Norway, which is relatively wealthy and also is, uh, has strong feelings for the environment, I would, think, I, I would think you could keep your carbon tax but add on top of that a fee and dividend because I think you can afford to do that. And the <laughs> rates that we start with, <laughs> the rates that we would be starting with are not that great. Uh, and and uh, so, and, and if the money is given back, you know, it's not cost. There is no net cost to the public. So I, I, I think you could just add it on top of. I wouldn't recommend uh, dispensing with your existing uh, efforts. Uh, but yeah, the reason, the main reason I like fee and dividend is in fact that it is the one way that we could hope to get an international agreement. Because all it really requires is that a small number of the major players agree to have a rising carbon fee. And those major players are China, the United States, and the European Union. Uh, you know, if we could get two of them to agree on this, then I think 
I think we can make it work because then you would put a border duty on products from countries that don't have, and and uh, that would be a big incentive for the other countries to join. Unlike the Kyoto Protocol, where you had no incentive, you can't you can only beg people to join. Uh, and the interesting thing is that I think China is ready to do something like this. They see they have a very strong incentive for wanting to reduce their uh, their they don't want to start an addiction to fossil fuels, which uh, will have major negative effects for them, both in terms of the pollution and the uh, climate change, which they do not deny the climate change. They realize that they are particularly vulnerable to climate change. They have uh, a few hundred million people living near sea level. So they have many reasons to want to uh, deal with climate and pollution. So um, I forgot what the question is. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, I'm rambling, but, uh, but I think. Okay. It was around disparate taxation in different countries, but yes, that was yeah. an excellent answer. So we're going to take this opportunity to shift over to our third politician who's with us tonight, Heike Holmos from the Socialistic Left. Is that why it's called in English, actually? Actually. Yes, as socialistic left. So uh, welcome so much, Heike, and feel free to ask the question. To, to put it in an American context, I would say that we, uh, um, we were part of the ruling coalition for eight years up to, uh, up to the current elections. So, uh, so, uh, so we, are, uh, we are a very strong red-green party in, in, uh, in Norway. Like, um, uh, like, like they have been the liberal green party, the one first uh, uh, speaker, and now the green, what can they say, center or uh, undecided, no, block green green, party, green. only green party in the middle. Right. Uh, to um, just uh, uh, it, I've got two brief questions that that points to uh, two of the challenges with the uh, with the system, and and the one is poor countries. In poor countries, you have uh, the big problem is not uh, the lack of a CO2 uh, fee, uh, but it is the the fossil fuel subsidies. Uh, and uh, uh, but in countries that have neither subsidies. Uh, nor have high taxes, how would you then get people to get greening their economy in, uh, in such a situation? Because that is essentially the key. Second question is on export-oriented countries. Import-oriented countries would be positive to this. Export-oriented countries would see a fee on fossil fuel as a disadvantage in the competition with other countries. Now, you mentioned European Union and the United States. Well, you know, European Union tried for 10 years to get a fee on CO2 and didn't manage and ended up with a quota, with the, uh, with the uh, cap, and trade. cap and trade system uh, instead. Um, and, uh, and the U.S. has, uh, has no big success, uh, what can you say, either up to, up to now. But how do you see the challenges for the export uh, industry in countries like this? Yeah, well, um, a country that adopts the fee and dividend would have the right to rebate to any exporter uh, the, the fee that they've paid in making their product if it is to be exported to a country that does not have a carbon fee. Uh, uh, that so, if if you are exporting uh, fossil fuels, <laughs> yeah, it's going to, it's going it's going to hurt your exports. Uh, but unfortunately, that, that's essential. We ha we have no choice. We we, uh, we have to. Uh, we have to move to uh, clean energy systems, and those countries, including Norway, which has, is making a lot of money from fossil fuels, had better start investing some of that money in 
clean energy systems if it wants to continue to make money from uh, the energy industry on the long run. It's, um, it's a simple fact that we can't put all that carbon in the atmosphere. And uh, yeah, it is. there are going to be some uh, differences of the impact on, on different countries. Uh, and there, there is certainly a, uh, a question of justice uh, with regard to developing countries which have not caused the problem, have not caused the climate problem, but they are very much in line to suffer the consequences of climate change. And that's why at one of the recent meetings, Secretary of State Clinton, who was then at that time the Secretary of State, you know, had said, oh, we're, there should be a fund of $100 billion a year. Well, we, we do. The developed countries who have benefited from burning the fossil fuels, the first fraction of them, do have an obligation. And I think Norway has been the most uh, generous in uh, helping trying to reduce deforestation, for example. So using some of their, uh, their earnings from fossil fuels in that way. That's, that's a part of the problem which has to be addressed, but it does not does not allow us or to not put a carbon price across the board. The carbon price is going to have to occur in developing countries as well as developed countries, because otherwise the burning of fossil fuels will simply move to a different place on the planet, and we just can't do that and solve the climate problem. Okay. Thank you so much for those answers.